Hey, my name is Mark Hunneman, and I'd like to talk to you just for a few minutes about something that's on my heart. There is real evil in this world, and it lurks in the most innocent-looking places, searching for someone to devour. Such is the case with the soon-to-be-released re kids movie, Paranorman. It was originally released in 2012, and as I understand it, it's supposed to be um, released again, sequel, uh, in May of 2019. Now, I love children's movies. I really do. I have three children, three grandkids, and I love to watch those movies with them. But there's something distinctly different about this particular movie. It exposes and encourages children to embrace supernatural evil. How so? By having a hero who can see and talk to the souls of dead people, ghosts. Parents, you must awaken to the reality that Casper is not friendly, as we are led to believe in our childhoods. It is past time to grasp the fact that these alleged ghosts are pure evil. I've seen it. Demons mimicking humans in order to deceive us and destroy us. In the movie, Norman is a misunderstood boy who has the ability to see and talk to ghosts. One day, because of his unusual gift, he is called on to save his hometown from a witch's curse. He liberates the town from evil zombies and, of course, moronic adults. You got that theme of anti-parents and authority in there. Norman is a conquering hero, thanks to his ability to converse with earthbound spirits. This, uh, it was a 3D movie, which makes it all the more visually gripping uh, from the short trailer I've seen. Now, one of the things that is... Um, Concerning to me is just the fact that Norman is a misunderstood boy. Now, at his age, think of kids who are in late elementary or middle school or even high school. How many kids feel misunderstood on the fringe? Who feel lost, misunderstood, you know, just as I said, misunderstood. And every, that would be everybody to some degree, but there are tons of people who are not in the popular group. They're not the jocks. They're not the um, the people who are um, cheerleaders and so on. And so it's uh, there. There would be. Tons of kids that could relate to Norman. You know, the misunderstood boy who's on the fringe. And they see this kid and they're saying, wow. And there's such a, a, an electric confluence of psychological things going on here. The desire for control. Um for reality, spiritual reality, immediate spiritual reality, and um, just uh, guidance and power. And when you put all those together, then it's a, it's a pretty frightening draw. And... Um, a pretty explosive combination and so again a lot of kids could could relate to the situation that Norman is in because a lot of kids be saying there's no magic there in my life there's no fun in my life mom and dad are always arguing with each other and boy wouldn't it be fun to be able to talk to a ghost wow that wouldn't that be cool and catch me my drift there. About ten years ago, um, I became. Uh, that's when I became originally alarmed 
got the sheer number of ghost-related shows on TV and movies, and particularly related to kids. I discovered that in the last uh, 20 years or so, the fascination with ghosts and the paranormal has just exploded, growing from a few lunatic, lunatic fringe groups to a at least one third of today's population embracing the paranormal and the belief in, in, in ghosts. And the younger the people and the more um, intelligent they are, the higher that ratio is. So the power of TV and movies has in affecting a radical change is really evident. Um, I also discovered that there were very significant issues at stake in the debate as to the ghost's true identity as I studied the issue. The reason I wrote my book, Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes, which you can get through Amazon, in which I use science, logic, and a biblical worldview, my purpose was to show beyond a reasonable doubt the identity of these entities, which are very, very real. And some of you are seeing shadows out of the corner of your eye. You're seeing orbs at night. You're having visitors at night. You're being touched at night. There's just odd things happening in your home. And this is happening with frightening frequency with more and more people in America. And folks, are they don't know who to talk to. You can always um, start with me if you'd like. With all of our sophisticated technology, we are intentionally encountering a realm which science is impotent to accurately identify. It can only describe paranormal phenomena. It can not accurately label it or identify it. It does not have the capacity to. So they try, but you can see in, in the TV shows that they're stumbling, they're inconsistent. They just don't have the ability to. Scripture and Scripture alone can tell us the inhabitants that populate the paranormal or supernatural realm. I've discovered that there are only two options. <laughs> There are, in fact, tra they are there are in fact trapped human souls, or we are being deceived on an enormous scale by demonic entities, and various layers of evidence prove they are the latter, deceiving spirits which, which are pure evil. That would make the notion of ghosts one of Satan's most successful global deceptions and make the movie Paranorman a spiritually dangerous movie. So what does that tell us about the movie Paranorman? Just this. Our precious children are being exposed to a worldview that glorifies supernatural evil, which makes a parent's worst nightmare about natural evil seem tame in comparison. If ghosts are really demons... Science, common sense, logic, and the Bible bears us out. Then the hero, Norman, is really an anti-hero in the worst sense. In Deuteronomy 18, we are forbidden to attempt to speak to the dead because they are really demons deceiving us by appearing as deceased humans. These evil spirits can mimic and morph into any shape they wish. The Angel of Light Principle in 2 Corinthians 11.14 Throughout the Bible, the paranormal realm is described as a forbidden territory to humans because it is a God-ordained abode of the demonic and Satan. Hence, common sense would dictate that what Norman does is unspeakably dangerous. Think about this for a moment, okay? From one parent to another. What is the qualitative difference between the known dangers of playing with a Ouija board and what ghost hunters do and what Norman is, is doing in the movie, calling out to alleged spirits of the dead? My point is, is that so many people are awakening to the fact that Ouija boards are dangerous, but what's the difference between 
a Ouija board in what Norman is doing in his movie. What's the, what's the difference? Nothing. It's, it's the same principle. The, the question that all three have in common is the same. Are there any spirits here? Most people are awakening to the dangers of plunging into the spirit world with the Ouija board. So why is Norman's behavior not recognized just as dangerous? Just because he can see the spirits, yes, some people really can, and that's an ability that, that the demonic um, gives to people, which goes away uh, once folks are converted and are delivered, the ability to be able to see the spirit realm. But just because people can see the spirit realm, they rarely are able to accurately identify what they're seeing. Okay, just as some people can see this realm, it does not diminish the danger of their being deceived. Demons will take whatever form or shape which advances their infernal agenda. A salient or important aspect of our souls is their invisibility. Right? You've never seen your soul. I've never seen mine. So follow with me, okay? So how could a person's soul suddenly appear to us after death? Become visible. Especially in ways that frighten us. Is God going to let that happen? Not the omnipotent omniscient, omnipresent, most high God, most holy God of the Bible. The only way that we have come to this place is because our God is too small. And that's why we are struggling with this notion of earthbound spirits is because our understanding of God has just diminished to the point where he is so small, it's, uh, we forget that this is his world, and he's absolutely sovereign over life and death. Besides, the Bible is emphatic that death is determinative of eternal destiny. In a biblical worldview, it is impossible to believe in trapped spirits. You die, you stand before Christ in judgment and you're sent immediately to heaven or to hell. But it just shows how biblically, biblically ignorant that our nation has become. We are exposing our kids to something that we ourselves are exceedingly naive to. There is a pandemic of paranormal mania, and few are aware of the fact that ba basic ghost theory is intellectually bankrupt. Worse, believing in and speaking to alleged ghosts is an express ticket to demonic oppression. As proof of this, the vast majority of paranormal investigators eventually bring a paranormal friend home with them, and they have their own paranormal demonic activity. Between the things that we see and the things that we fear, there are doors, and once they are open, Nightmares become a reality. And if we let our kids see this movie, then doors are going to be opened and nightmares are going to become a reality. Speaking with ghosts is like boarding an express train direct to demonic oppression or worse. I've seen this happen countless times and I'm fed up. I really am, with the church and the media's dismissiveness of it. This movie will be directly or indirectly responsible for the opening of countless doors for the demonic to enter through and the ruination of our children. If ghosts are demons, then this conclusion is not an exaggeration. There are a few specific dangers that I'd like to mention uh, quickly. Watching this movie will result in the following problems. First, the number of children who have nightmares, literally, will increase. 
If this occurs, then pray for their protection before they fall asleep. Second, many children will begin seeing something that is not of this world. The anecdotal evidence overwhelmingly suggests that children are much more sensitive to the paranormal realm. I'm terrified to think of what our spiritually sensitive and impressionable children are going to experience. If they see red eyes staring at them from their closets at night, do not dismiss it. Your child is in serious danger. Because they are children, they may see things that you're unable to. We are throwing our kids to the worst possible wolves imaginable, the demonic. They hate all humans, but especially kids. I'm not saying that all kids will leave the theater possessed, but many, many of them will have their minds and worldviews affected. Their view of what God is like, what um, the universe is like, what reality is like, what God's relationship to the world is, is he in control of it, what happens after death, is God in control of our lives and, and our death and our souls, or is he not? All these things are affected. These are just a few of the things that, as movies have a profound impact on uh, forming children's worldviews. It really does. When they leave, which, by the way, my book helps people to think with the biblical worldview. When they leave, will you be able to answer their questions? Mommy, Daddy, what is a ghost? Are they real? Will I become a ghost when I die? Or better yet, don't let them go. Will you be prepared to give them a well-thought-through answer if they hear their friends have gone to the movie? My mom used to tell me when I was a young... She used to say, honey, when a situation was tough, she would say, honey, better safe than sorry. Please, my dear friends, be safe rather than sorry. Do not let your children see Paranorman or your grandchildren unless you wish your life were theirs to possibly turn into a, pot, a wide awake nightmare. Jesus Christ conquered sin, Satan, and the grave, and our hope of entering heaven upon death is absolutely certain if we are in Christ. If not, then all eternity will be a wide, wide awake nightmare. Flee from Paranorman into the loving and gentle arms of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you.